Oh. The technical name for the mechanism I designed is a split ring compound planetary gear set. So it is kind of a planetary gear set, but the way it does what it does is so different from a normal planetary gear set that the comparison isn't really useful. So instead I'll be comparing this mechanism, the split ring compound planetary gear set, to the harmonic drive because they operate more similarly. But of course they do have some very notable differences, namely the fact that this new mechanism doesn't bend at all and that it can produce reduction ratios up to an order of magnitude higher than your standard harmonic drive in the same volume, if not a smaller volume. This new mechanism is so good at packing a really high reduction ratio into a tiny volume that it's the highest reduction ratio of any mechanism I've ever designed by a landslide. It's really clever how it does it, and it kind of beats the harmonic drive at its own game. Now, back to the video. This project started with me trying to explain an idea I had to some people on my Discord server, which, by the way, you can join. There will be a link for that in the description. I was having a conversation with someone trying to explain an idea I had while they were making suggestions. And eventually someone on my Discord server linked me to a Wikipedia page. And apparently this mechanism that I had been dreaming up that I thought was new was already established and it had existed for decades. So it does certainly exist, but it's surprisingly uncommon it seems. Secure, which is an online electronics store, sent me a few of these NEMA 23 stepper motors. But these aren't just your average run-of-the-mill stepper motors because they have an integrated servo conversion on the back. What that means is the driver is built into it and the driver also knows the position of the rotor at any given point. And that allows these motors to use something called FOC or field-oriented control. Now we could spend a long time talking about everything that goes into field-oriented control, but we don't need to know all that. All we need to know for now is that it means that the driver recognizes the mechanical orientation of the rotor and it then controls the orientation of the magnetic field and its amplitude to be able to control the output exactly. FOC allows you to do some really cool stuff, namely arbitrarily precise positioning. So you can move the rotor to any position. You're not just limited to the 200 steps per revolution that a stepper motor no normally is. These drivers are also really cool because they are driven in the same way that normal stepper motor drivers are, are driven. That is just via a, a step pin. So if you have any kind of CNC machine, you could swap these out and you wouldn't even have to change the electronics. Before we build the mechanism on this, I want to demonstrate some of the really cool stuff we can do with it. The first thing we need to do with this is to calibrate it. I'm going to turn off control mode and then turn on the automatic calibration mode. In the calibration step, it's going to move the, uh, the rotor around full 360 degrees in one direction and then back in the opposite direction. And it's taking positional data at every point. I can turn the calibration off and the control mode back on. So now I can turn it with my potentiometer. So one of the first things you might notice is that it's super quiet. It's so quiet because the FOC is approximating sine waves to drive this, which is the most efficient way you can drive a brushless motor. So what it's really doing is it's just driving it smoother than you would normally be able to drive the motor so you don't get that, that clicking noise. So what makes this whole system so cool is its ability to automatically control torque to maintain a speed. Right now the motor isn't turning at all and you can see it's drawing 100 milliamps. Now if I go and try and turn it, you can see that it takes more current. The driver is automatically recognizing that there's an external torque on the system that's moving the rotor and then it gives it more current to pull it back into position where it thinks it should be. Now when I bring it up to speed, it's drawing 190 milliamps. Now if I try and stop it, you can see it jumps up to 450 milliamps. So again, the driver is seeing that the rotor isn't turning as fast as it should be and it's automatically compensating. That's the beauty of servo control. And this whole system, this secure stepper motor makes it extraordinarily easy. I'm seriously in love with these motors and I'm so excited to, to give them a purpose. I designed the gears for this mechanism with zero backlash, which generally would be a bad idea when you're 3D printing and don't have high tolerances. But instead of adjusting things in the CAD model itself, I instead use one of the functionalities of Cura, and I just offset everything inwards on the planetary gear sets by like 0.1 millimeters, so that they were a little bit undersized, and it ended up fitting really well. 
Oh, and I also designed a camera mount that attaches to the bed of my 3D printer so that the 3D print is always central in the camera, it stays still. I think it's pretty cool. I probably could have used a more wide angle lens though. Let me know what you think about these time lapses. This should be a pretty straightforward assembly. There's not too many parts here. So first I'll press on the pinion gear. There we go, pinions on. I'll attach the lower ring gear with a few M5 screws. I'll put in the planet gears next, but I should mention first that there's something special about these. Remember that the bottom ring gear and the top ring gear are offset by one tooth? Well, that means that only one tooth is gonna line up. All the other ones are gonna be slightly off. To adjust for that, every one of these planet gears is different. For the first one, you can see that the top and bottom teeth line up vertically. Now, when we go to the second one, the top and bottom teeth are offset slightly, and that keeps on going down the line. So all the teeth are offset and they have to be put into here in this specific order, otherwise things will not line up. We'll stick this guy in, then I'll just go down the line trying to space them about evenly. There we go. So hopefully this should fit over really easily. And it does, uh, look at that. I do need to press on the, the bearing first though. Oh yeah, that is a really nice fit. Look at that, that's the mechanism. There is a little bit of backlash, but it's not much at all, and I think I could reduce it. Definitely not back drivable, which is unsurprising. It's wired up, let's turn the power on. Look at that, look at that, that is awesome. Definitely makes a little bit of noise, and you can probably see the output is rotating really slowly. This is as fast as I'm able to make it go with this setup. Um, and it's not going very fast. That output is just crawling along. But that's what you get with a 171.5 to one reduction. The way I've explained this mechanism so far kind of makes it seem like it beats the harmonic drive at its own game. It can produce reduction ratios and order of magnitude higher than the harmonic drive in potentially a smaller space. Harmonic drives are known for their high torque and a low volume, so why isn't this thing the standard? I mean, according to the 172 to 1 reduction and the torque of the motor I used, the actuator I made should have a max stall torque of around 150 foot-pounds. I mean, that's, that's the kind of torque that a, a car's engine produces. So the question is, why isn't this more popular? I think part of the answer is just that it's not super well known. I had never heard of it until I went and tried to reinvent it myself. But I think the bigger answer is really just that it can't necessarily handle those big torques. Obviously, my 3D printed mechanism isn't gonna handle 150 foot-pounds, but even if it was made of metal, it probably couldn't either. The thing with harmonic drives or cycloidal drives is that they usually have something with the tooth geometry that allows it to take a greater load. Often the teeth are a lot wider and shallower so they can take extra force. With this mechanism though, they're just normal old envelope gear teeth. So this mechanism makes a lot of promises about high torque, but it can't really keep them. Because at the end of the day, those normal old involute gear teeth, they're long and they're thin and they kind of have to be. They're just weak relative to other gear options. So yes, this is a really high reduction ratio in a really compact space, but it being so compact means that it will break at those higher torques. So my expectation is that when you try to approach those values that you can calculate theoretically, is that the teeth on the gears are just going to shear off. Your gears are gonna turn into wheels and your mechanism will fail. Well, that's what I hypothesize is gonna happen. I suppose the next step is to go ahead and test it out. I've attached this 3D printed lever arm, so I should be ready to do some torque tests. This actuator should theoretically be able to handle torque significantly higher than anything I'd be able to apply to it. So I'm not expecting the motor to be the one to give up here. If anything fails, it should be the mechanism itself. It should be the gears teeth shearing off or something like that. So my goal here is to test to complete failure. All right, here goes testing to failure. The actuator is holding a stall torque right now. Um, I should note there is, there's a little bit of backlash. We can see it here but it's not too much and I think I could get rid of it. I have some ideas on how to get rid of it. Stall torque is being held. My first weight is a water bottle. This is two pounds full. Two pounds. <laughs> the whole bench is shaking, but it can still, 
It can lift it without any problem. The, uh, the current doesn't even go up. It doesn't care about that weight whatsoever. Now I've got five pounds. Here goes five pounds. Nothing's shearing yet. Lifts it like a champ. No problem whatsoever. And the, the stall torque current has gone up by 20 milliamps. That's it. We're doubling our weight and we're going to 10 pounds this time. Here we go. It's staying. The stall torque is only up 30 milliamps. Oh. <laughs> yep, I'd, I'd, I'd call that a failure. So I think what happened here is the teeth themselves didn't actually break, but instead these, the individual planet gears all bent inwards, which then disengaged the teeth. Since there isn't a sun gear on the, on the top layer there to push them outwards, they're free to bend in, which is how it failed. And then in addition to that, some of the, the teeth got shaved down a little bit. I'm gonna call that a pretty successful test. Of course, it didn't end up being 150 foot pounds of torque, but that was pretty obvious. That was 10 pounds at 150 millimeters. So that's about five foot pounds. And I'll put the Newton meters of torque on screen. And that's pretty respectable. That's nothing to shake a stick at. And I do also have some ideas on how I can potentially increase that torque. But for now, I'm pretty happy with 10 pounds. And as an added benefit, the mechanism does actually still work. It, there's a lot more backlash than there was before, but it still works as a whole. Well, there you have it. That was the split ring compound planetary gear set. I'll remind you that this was 171.5 to one reduction, which is by far the highest reduction I've ever made. I don't necessarily think that this is going to be great for all of your really high torque applications, because again, those teeth are probably gonna shear at those higher loads. But if you have an application where you want a really high reduction ratio, you want something to be compact, you want something to be precise, you want something to be slow, um, then this mechanism could definitely be a, a strong contender. This actuator was a lot of fun to make. It was surprisingly simple and straightforward, um, which is kind of new for me. I do also have two more of these motors, and I've got some ideas on how to make this handle higher torque on, and on how to get rid of some of that backlash. I'm thinking it probably wouldn't be too difficult to throw together a, a relatively simple robotic arm using these motors and this mechanism. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see. I know I've talked about making a robotic arm for a while, but this one, I feel like I could just throw it together and it'd work great. 